All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Nomad, Nomad of Nowhere, Nowhere. Episode, episode three. three. Yeah. The Nomad has caused some mayhem. He has caused some, some mayhem, mayhem. And we have some uh, McCree looking fellows coming in around yeah. high around high noon. High noon. That's right. Well, at least it's high noon somewhere in the world. Yes, but yes. <laughs> but in particular, uh, the nomad is kind of separated from the primary exactly. plot of going on of goings on with Scout. And Scout Toth, and Toth yeah. are going to do some kind of a side mission before right. they are allowed to go back to look for the nomad. Yeah, I kind of hope that they get like rejoined soon, though, because like I I like their antics together a lot. Way more than separated, even though the ep last episode was quite good. Right. In particular, I think we like the antics with the Nomad. And right. when Nomad and Scout were together in the first episode, awesome. it was proper. Proper yep. good stuff. That's right. Um, in particular, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Toth's character potentially have some depth. Yeah. Uh, right now, her character is sorely lacking in the depth department. Sure, of the of the main three, absolutely. Yeah, um, I am. I am looking forward to getting more, uh, like more stuff like the flashbacks from the Nomad, mm, and also sure. those those very on the nose uh, bits of dialogue and banter from side <laughs> characters. That was yes, quite like the like the kids uh, in the previous episode. Oh, those yeah. were those were hilarious. I mean, the voice acting was hilarious in that it wasn't. It wasn't the best kind of delivery and stuff, but right. it, it still made it charming in how in how ridiculously funny exactly. the, the dialogue was, and kind of shows how fast it is as well. One yes. of the things this show did that I wasn't sure if it was intentional or not, but upon rewatching episodes, I would see that these guys talk very fast. Yep, and mm -hmm. it's just something that I think that's something intentional. That's just yeah. how they have it all set up together so yeah. certainly helps the episode feel longer even though they're still pretty short uh yeah but they're they're a decent length for yes. uh for you know kind of rooster teeth's kind of side project show like right. we can tell that they're at the very least giving the show you know some attention in particular mm -hmm. um but it is definitely not one of their flagship shows uh like ruby or red versus blue right or yeah. the upcoming genlock which is probably going to be a really big show as far as yeah attention put into it but yeah let's uh let's get into this episode yep. and see what antics go down mm. okay no man of nowhere i'm totally not a bounty hunter <laughs> And I suppose you made up your mind that this is my fault. What? Considering being deputy makes you in charge of the keys for the handcuffs and the cell, and you somehow managed to misplace them, <laughs> while also managing to lock yourself up in both. Yeah. I Looks like you just walk through I those bars. See yeah. If I could get out. Well, <laughs> oh, and now they're all small. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you can still just turn sideways. Obviously. Yeah, it's true. Sheriff, you gotta come see this. Maybe his head is abnormally large, you know. <laughs> Who is this guy in the bath towel? Yeah. I wanted to see. <laughs> you look a little on in years, so I'll keep this brief. <laughs> I'm hunting somebody what passed through this town of yours. <laughs> Bliss Hill likes to keep clear of trouble. Whoever your quarry is, they ain't here. <laughs> Best keep riding, son. All right. So you ain't seen this fella? <gasps> like I said, quarry ain't here. Wait, Sheriff! <laughs> that was that one fella. <laughs> the one that brought the mill back to life? He did magic? You ran him out of town yourself. You don't remember that? Wow. Looks like we got started on the wrong foot. <laughs> now, he just said he wasn't here. He didn't say he didn't come through. Right. And bring him to me. Or I'll be making some of that trouble y'all so keen to avoid. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to decline your offer. You know who I am, Sheriff? Oh, you I'm got... the one they call the ranch hand. No it's notoriety. <laughs> The ranch hand. Deadliest cowpoke in the southwest. Oh, Done bad shoot. things to nice people for pennies. <laughs> Whose bounty I'm after? <laughs> Biggest payday I'd ever seen. Mm. He's the dreaded nomad of nowhere. Ooh, Gotta be credits. honest. I'm willing to do a lot of bad things for this one. <laughs> Starting with these nice folk here. <laughs> I heard stories of you, ranch hand. The dude Not is still sure sitting there in his towel. Well, seeing is believing. 
Uh, what does he what? got underneath there? <laughs> Some kind of chainsaw? <laughs> Mechanical arm? Oh, a ranch hand. Oh, yeah, watch. It's gonna be a hand. Oh, it's the whole arm. Yep. Okay, Ironwood. Whoa. So, you're going to get me that new. nomad. I don't think we've well, ever seen anything like that technologically. Yeah. One by one. Please, just All right. let the boy go. If this is truly the nomad you're hunting, he's evil. He won't care who you threaten. Well, that's not what I heard. Oh. Now what you heard. Start unloading. Hmm. The sooner we can be on our way, the sooner we can get back on the hunt for the nomad. Mm. Oh my stars! Is that a Dairy Town Five Thousand? I ain't seen <laughs> one of those since I was back home. Oh, Captain no. Tuff, right hand to Don Paragon. This outpost is behind on its shipment. You're the oil man. I am now. It was Paul before, but he hurt himself trying to get a running again. Oh He's shoot! Gone now. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Well. We've got a schedule to keep. <laughs> Don Paragon doesn't want to fall behind, so we brought your water with us to avoid delays. Once we trade for your oil, we'll be on our way. Well, that's just oil it. Oil for water. Pump's not working, and we can't fix it. Oh, All we got shoot. left's a small reserve. Great. We'll take that then. But that's to trade for crops. Oh, jeez. She's right. We just can't. Not with the pump still broken. I understand your dilemma. But you can trade with me right now, or send me back to the Dawn empty-handed. You know which one of those is worse. Whoa. I'm sorry. Dang. The answer is no. You've already caught me in a bad mood. So if you don't change your mind, Jeez. I'm going to have to drop the nice act. What the heck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just rustle yeah. up the old calm wagons, shall we? <laughs> There's no need for a spat. Let me take a look at the machine, huh? Scout, they're refusing to pay the Dawn. There are rules. They're thirsty. And I used to fix these all the time back home. It won't hurt to try. <laughs> Unless you want to resort to murder. Yeah. What's well, crawled up her battle axe? <laughs> she wants to get that nomad so bad she don't care what's in her way. <laughs> Just like I always say, Jethro. Hurting people hurt people. Oh my well, gosh. Afraid, yes. She's going to give my people a bad name. The Yadala are her people too. Oh. She's doing hmm. it for them. Doing this Come for on, them. Let's see that machine. Huh. Is that it's a hint of motivation? motivation? Yeah. Hmm. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> the drawing. No, nope, nope. he's scared this time. This is what happened last time. Thought I might find oh. you up here. Wow. Her <laughs> cavern's one of Barty's favorite spots, besides the mill. <laughs> Keep out. Unless you have positive contributions to make to the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I, I came here to ask something of you. There's a real bull of a bounty hunter in town. He's fixing to cause all sorts of trouble. That is, unless we turn you over. Please. <laughs> you wouldn't. You've got nowhere left to go. The ranch hand is beyond this old man. And he's got my boy. Oh. Oh. I know you ain't got calls to do me favors after how I treated you. But if not for me, do it for Barty. But, but... What if you animated his arm? You caused yeah. us a whole mess of trouble without ever meeting to, stranger. You ever thought what might happen if you went and started some trouble on purpose? Oh. Hmm. Well, and the guy's still standing there with the his jokes, towel. I know. All Gotta the jokes. Honest, didn't really figure y'all would hang around to see the showdown. <laughs> we ain't got nothing else to do. Say, where'd you <gasps> get that arm? Oh, uh, I got it from the Iron Border. The Urban Iron Border. Border. Nope. What's it by? Up near Tame Tooth. Know that one? Huh? I've never left this place. Uh, <laughs> the new man's here. <laughs> Howdy there, nomad. That shot. I hope you're here to turn yourself in. <laughs> we're gonna risk a fight over this lot? Way I heard, they don't even like you much. <laughs> you <defeat> yourself. <laughs> you will not magic. defeat my resolve. You will not bring me down. 
Keeps hitting the knives. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Run. Good luck running from this. Okay. All right. Oh no way. He's already hiding. <laughs> the whole place is. The whole place is his weapon now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> This is some what? Beauty and the Beast stuff right what? here. What? What? <laughs> and yeah. Well, that happened. We have to help him. Hey, this is how I can the guy can get broken out of jail. I think I know just the protocol. Just the protocol. Don't tell nobody you've seen this. <laughs> what? Oh, use the handcuffs? But, okay. Why do all our missions to the outskirts end in a standoff? <laughs> what did I tell you, Jethro? The sordid cycle of generational poverty only begets violence. <laughs> the only thing I be getting is bored. <laughs> hey, continuity. <laughs> it's just, it's just Luckily it missed. Go! An object in motion will stay in motion. No, but that's a trail back to the right to the nomad. Yep. What I miss? The nomad. Well, let's get to it then. We can't. Orders. But did you fix it or not? Jeez. Oh, good news and bad news. The good is that I got the converter rig to last you a spell until you can get a replacement. The bad? Well, the pump isn't quite as busted as you think. The oil well's almost plumb dried out. Uh, You'll need to take your trade elsewhere. Oh, I see. Well, thank you for... Can we get this done already? <sighs> take it. We'll make do. Good. Load it up. Wait, that's it? That's all we wow. trade that for? Rules are rules. Let's go. Wow. Lots of ground to make up. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> he has to crank it up every once in a while to kind of keep it running. Oh, nice. Yeah, anyone can just clap and get his attention. <laughs> Looks like we're all back where we started. <laughs> so what'll it be, Nomad? Care to save the little fella? Wait. <laughs> and he didn't just pull it back? <laughs> oh, well. Smooth, buddy. Smooth. Clap, clap. Yeah, clap, clap indeed. Quickly. Can't miss a point blank range, can you? Right. I have had it up to here. <laughs> 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 okay, nice. that was that was, that was funny. It's time to collect that. Oh my oh, who shinderu? I said. <laughs> Stop, hitting, Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Snake <Sneak style. laughs> Launches after him. Oh my gosh! Wow. Well, buckle my boots. You beat him. That was so smart of you. Jeez. Figure out he couldn't use your magic on his arm till he wasn't holding it no more. What? What? Oh, oh yeah, of course. That's naturally. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> and everything is fixed. Yep. Or at least the town is happy and safe. Can't yeah, thank you enough. 
You saved my boy. And thanks to the pack the ranch had boy. behind, we got enough coin to get us by for a time. We owe you a great deal. Oh, sure. Which is why it stings that I'm gonna ask you to leave. <laughs> no, that that makes sense. Yep. Magic's the thing. Nobody done it in longer than any of us have been alive. And we can't risk that kind of attention. And magic sends it mm. all the way to the top. Mm. So thank you. But I'll be thanking you more to leave and not come back. Huh. Hmm. Another kind of alluding if to I can ask you one Red more thing, El Rey. Don't tell Barty. He won't understand. Yeah, for what it's worth, I'm glad the story's wrong about you. Mm. Hey, that light thing again. Mm hmm. Time to rewrite the rest of them, Nomad. Okay. okay. There we go. That's an episode. Yeah. Huh. Well, okay. Interesting. All right, okay. so in particular, the ranch hand kind of escapade served as a means for which the nomad can show that he is someone that could help people. He can, right, yeah. He can be a hero, essentially. He can be someone that protects others. Yeah. He doesn't have to be known as the dreaded nomad of nowhere. Exactly. But that's a cool thing to kind of allude to is that the reason why the Nomad of Nowhere probably got the reputation in the first place is by mucking around with his magic. Right. Either in a truly vindictive or kind of aggressive way. Or, just, or in an unintentional way yep. that just caused problems. Right. And it's kind of something that could be both, but right now, for some reason, people don't know about magic I guess outside of the nomad right. and yet he hasn't yeah. been seen in a hundred years so mm -hmm. what kind of magic was he doing you know that you know yeah. gave him this bounty that's lasted mm -hmm. you know this so long, long. Yeah. so huh the, it's a little bit interesting but they keep alluding to El Rey in this one the king oh um, yeah you know and mm -hmm. this one is it's going all the way to the top so that's uh, right. something to think about now, one of the things that I found kind of interesting about this episode is that they deviated from, it looked like, their usual style. Mm. The first episode had, like, mix of comedy and mix of serious. Right. The second episode was a lot more comedy than serious. A lot more, yeah. And this one felt like it was... Almost all serious. Almost all serious. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was not expecting that. Now, yeah. the... Okay, the main, the main question I have really is, what they're doing with Toth. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So what they did in this episode in particular was tried to give her some kind of motivation by saying that there's a race of people in particular that she's doing these things for. Uh, right. She does have a darker skin tone than most of the other people. And they brought up that there was another crew member with the uh, golden dandy lions that uh, -huh. uh uh you know was one of was one of those people as well so toth is yeah. doing this for the greater good essentially right and or she's trying to up the standing of her people mm -hmm. in the society or something like that right but the thing is is that her character is so unlikable in like yeah. almost every other way that it's like, okay, this th we need that kind of depth for her pronto. Otherwise, we're going to be wanting to avoid watching things exactly. with Scout because right. Scout, is, Scout a is a lovable character, in character. But and, right. But if you have Toth in every scene that Scout is in, it brings down the overall Scout exactly. experience. And then we're and, just waiting for the Nomad, the Nomad. The yeah, nomad. and I feel like they spent about almost two-thirds of the episode on the nomad yes and then maybe a third of it you know or a little more than that on scout and toth yeah and i kind of like I, that distribution i i kind of like it too but i don't like it when they then try to have this deep development or you know conflict or whatever for toth when 
there's not enough time to really do it justice. Mm -hmm. If they that this is the main reason where I want them to be together. That way they can right. have stuff like this mm -hmm. and not make Toth just seem more unlikable because they can have resolution to this conflict that they introduce. Yep. They might do that in future episodes, but mm -hmm. so far we haven't seen that yet. So right, you know. I think I think the main format of the show that we can almost guarantee though mm -hmm. is that unfortunately they're not actually going to catch the nomad because if they catch the nomad the story has to dramatically shift well what i was hoping they would do is they would end up having something where they end up teaming up with the nomad and then it's the misadventures well, of their that's you know, once they band. yes but that's once but, yeah. they realize that they're not that they shouldn't try and capture the nomad and bring right. it to a don paragon yeah i almost would like it better if Scout ended up basically splitting from the group, kind of like she was in the first episode, uh, as a permanent thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because because that way you could have a lot better conflict with Toth, yeah. because she's trying to get the Nomad, but then also the one soft spot that we've seen she has is, is for Scout. Scout. Right. So if both of those things are in conflict, that would be a great way to make us care about the character more. Yeah. It would and also if... mean that she wouldn't be in the story when she's not needed. Yeah, in particular, it would also give uh, a clever reason for Scout to want to get the Nomad is if she does have a soft spot for t uh, if, for Scout. Sorry, if, if Toth, Toth has a soft, soft spot for, for Scout, Scout. Mm -hmm. and Scout was with the Nomad, then, s then Toth would be trying to rescue yes, Scout from exactly. the Nomad. Yep. And... Mm -hmm. Scout would be basically reminding her, no, I'm not, you know, exactly. a prisoner here. I'm wanting to help right. this, and, this guy. And know? even if, and, and even like it. when Toth would figure that out, um, they would have a really cool thing that they could do where since other people would be after the Nomad, mm -hmm. now Toth would have to protect Scout because Scout would be getting in trouble because she's with the right. Nomad. Yep. And that, that could be a way to just have lots of conflict that's all tied together and yeah. we care about a lot more. Also, the way this episode is uh, ending, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have a clear tie-in into the next episode uh, beyond uh, the Toth Scout storyline. They're right. going back to Don Paragon with their uh, with their report, essentially. Yeah. But the Nomad can go literally anywhere now. Right. In the story, and yeah. what I would like to uh, see happen is if they focus on the nomad delving into his or her its uh, backstory mm -hmm. essentially we can get some really cool kind of foundation as to why we're uh, investing yeah. in the show in the long term sure some sort of nomad alone episode yeah exactly yeah. and focus on toth and scout basically slowly coming to maybe Toth has a little bit of a yes I realize that I'm doing these horrible things but I'm doing them specifically for reason like let yeah. it be talked about let it be yep. shown a little bit more right in particular I think that they tried to tease it a little bit with Don Paragon being very um possessive of Toth a little bit but it was very subtle I think when they had that meeting right. in particular and also the Don is not a serious not character. a serious character right and that was and that was i think one of the one of the main things that felt different about this episode was mm -hmm. that um before when they went to uh what, what was it uh oasis Blitz hill no, no no the the paradiso place or you know or oh wait whatever, whatever. The place don, don paragon's don paragon's place, place. Mm -hmm. um they they made all the thing of like selling the water and all that stuff so over the top and ridiculous yeah. that it was like a very tongue-in-cheek kind of humor Whereas in this one, they didn't do that. They were more like, okay, this is serious time now. Well, well, it was good in that we believed it, you yeah. know, just just enough for it to, to work. But the uh, the the act of having it in the episode makes us actively dislike Toth. Like, yeah, right. like now exactly. it, it, it takes it takes basically what little we. <laughs> barely anything we liked about Toth before and basically just stamped it into the dirt. Right. And then they tried to have some other thing where they're like, no, there's a hint of motivation somewhere in there, mm. but we haven't actually shown it. So therefore, right. it's just... It, it was literally like exposition kind of mm -hmm. casually dumped by yep. the, the dandelions. Yeah. 
Right. And which, it, which actually, I think that was the funniest part of this episode was they're like, as I always say, Jethro, hurting people hurt people. I'm like, wow, that that's actual yeah. wisdom. Good stuff. And then it's these... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was it about the choked economic you know yes, yes. positions uh lead towards a systemic you know violence or something yeah, yeah. like that and i was like yep that that's act that's true too uh, so i think that might yep. be where the the show is showing its is its, its face essentially is we have the yeah. nomad story which is a mystery mm-hmm. we have the toth scout story which is a adventure type sort kind of, of thing thing which yeah. they, it hasn't really come into its identity yet. Yeah. We have all the setting things, which is uh, a little mix of comedy, social mm-hmm. commentary, and overall kind of Western steampunk kind of right with the steampunk mishmash. now getting thrown in there with the with the arm. Yeah, it's more of just like a mishmash of every kind of pseudo Western fantasy right. kind of thing you could think yeah. of. And then there's uh, just the you know the the I don't, I don't know how to describe it it's kind of the the tie-ins between like characters who i would say ha- don't really have identity how, how would i describe it kind I of don't know uh, um hmm. but I, yeah. I i feel like and again with with a character like toth because what they're what they're trying to do is something that you can totally do with a character but generally you want to do that when you've already established and gotten the audience to like the character so that even yeah. though even while they're doing their their thing that makes you not like them they might also be doing other things that make you like them like making funny jokes or something like that right and because toth is so overly serious well we then respond to the things that she does in a serious manner which is wait know, a minute why are does you doing does toth that? have a scar Maybe? You know what I just realized? Oh. Her name is Toth. Which sounds like Toth. Yeah. So you're saying maybe she's just Zuko? I think they're trying to make an older female Zuko. Zuko. I must capture the nomad to regain my honor. mm -hmm. And it's it's a bad it's a bad Zuko. Like it's it's a really bad Zuko. Yeah. Like like volume one Zuko without any of the visual storytelling or any of the um any Without the, the blue spirit, the storm, the, the... Well, no, we're not even at that part yet, is, is what I'm saying. But oh, right, right. the thing is, this character doesn't show any potential towards that area. Whereas within two episodes of Avatar, we pretty much understood that uh, there was something else going underneath the surface. Right. With Zuko, especially by three episodes. Yeah, in. yeah. And so... Yeah. Mm, yeah, so if well, they we'll give see. us if they give us something to make us, like, root for Toth or... <laughs> sympathize with her or something mm. then yeah. yeah they could do it in the next one i mm-hmm. think it would be needed especially if we showed what kind of leverage don paragon potentially has over her yeah that, there you go that, that would there be how go. they could that would be how they could do this yeah that would be great but other than that i think that i think that i'm still gonna give this show like a, a fair shot story wise uh for 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 however long this first season runs mm-hmm. In particular, because of the Nomad, I just want to stress that enough. That yeah, the Nomad's is, pretty great. Right. That this is yeah. this is a this is a fun show that occasionally has some little quips and some little things in there that you're like, oh, that's clever. Like I loved the mm-hmm. little bit in the tavern where they had the sequence of the Nomad essentially animating all the things right. from his yeah. hidden spot, uh-huh. and <laughs> bringing him up to the poker table, and suddenly they're all like, yeah, what do you have? What are your With cards? Actual what are you cards in yeah. his hand. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff was fun. There was a lot of visual gags and jokes in there. They're pretty funny. Yes. The uh, the handcuffs. Mm-hmm. The uh, you know, don't tell no one you saw this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, other than that, just looking forward to seeing if they can uh, give the characters some proper motivation. Right. Depth. Yeah. Yep. Because right now there isn't really any. Not really. No. Yeah. Yeah. But. All right. I- I mean, yeah. Let's. I mean, power of a concept can do a lot of things, right? And we'll just see if they can execute it in the future, right? And there's always the there's always the worst episode, you know, in in a in a series. Yeah. Of if anything, I don't think this is even. Cl- I think this is probably one of the better of the three episodes that we've actually been shown. It's the fact that they have still not found the identity of the show yet by yeah, three yeah, episodes yeah. in. It's not that this episode brought it down. It's right. that this episode shows. Uh, a little bit more so that the that the creators of the show 
have something that they want to communicate, but they're struggling to communicate it. Right. And we can tell that there's something that they're wanting to communicate. Yes. It's just not being communicated very well. And that's that's right. okay. That's yeah. okay. This is uh, not something that we came in with extremely high expectations for in particular. Yeah. It was replacing Chibi. So, you know, it's like in, with Chibi... That's not Chibi's a, Chibi's got an emotional attachment to us, it, so it, exactly. I, I don't I don't need plot in Ruby Chibi. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this is really fun uh, discussion. I think the discussion was a little bit light here, in particular, because the episode is uh, shorter for a while. Shorter, but um, uh, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of a good little episodic kind of western story of you know. Yeah. Showdown. See where it goes. Showdown at Bliss Hill and all that. And right. Yeah. I guess we'll see you in the next one. But until then, we're semblance of sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next, next time. time.